Hello everyone, this is Vaseem from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session in which I am going to talk about bias variance in machine learning. So let's take a look at the agenda for this session. First of all, I will give you a brief introduction about irreducible error in machine learning and after this I will talk about bias and variance. Moving further, I will discuss the mathematics behind it and then we will learn how does it affect our model. And finally, to sum up this session, I will discuss bias variance trade-off and total error. I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon for latest updates on Edureka. And do check out the Edureka's machine learning certification program. The link is given in the description box below. Now, talking about irreducible error, any model in machine learning is assessed based on the prediction error on a new independent unseen data set. Now, error is nothing but the difference between the actual output and the predicted output. To calculate the error, we do the summation of the reducible and irreducible error, also known as bias variance decomposition. Now, coming on to irreversible error, it is nothing but those errors that cannot be reduced irrespective of any algorithm that you use in that model. It is caused by unusual variables that have a direct influence on the output variable. So, in order to make your model efficient, we are left with the reducible error that we need to optimize at all costs. Now, reducible error has two components that is bias and variance. Presence of bias and variance influence the model's accuracy in several ways like overfitting, underfitting, etc. And let us take a look at the bias and variance to understand how to deal with reducible error in machine learning. So let's understand what is bias in machine learning. Bias is basically how far we have predicted the value from the actual value. We say the bias is too high if the average predictions are far off from the actual value. So in this case, the bias is clearly very high. And high bias will cause the algorithm to miss a dominant pattern or relationship between the input and output variables. And when the bias is too high, it is assumed that the model is quite simple and does not fathom the complexity of the data to determine the relationship and thus causing underfitting. Now let's also take a look at variance in machine learning model. So on an independent unseen data or validation set, when a model does not perform as well as it does with the trained data set, there is a possibility that the model has a variance. It is basically telling you how scattered the predicted values are from the actual values. A high variance in a data set means that the model has trained with a lot of noise and irrelevant data, thus causing the overfitting in the model. And when the model has high variance, it becomes very flexible and makes strong predictions for new data points because it has tuned itself to the data points of the training set. So let us also try to understand the concept of bias variance mathematically. So let the variance that we are predicting to be Y and the other independent variables to be X. So let us assume there is a relationship between the two variables such that Y is equal to FX plus E. So in this equation, E is the estimated error with the mean value zero. And when we make a classifier using uh, algorithms like linear regression, support vector machine, etc., the expected squared error at point x will be bias squared plus variance plus irreducible error. So now let's take a look at how does it actually affect the machine learning model that we are making. So we can put the relationship between bias variance in four categories that is, high variance and high bias, low variance and high bias, then we have high variance and low bias. And last but not least, we have low variance and low bias. So the first relationship that is high variance and high bias, in this relationship, the model will be inconsistent and also inaccurate on average. Now coming on to low variance and high bias, the models are consistent, but they are very low on average. And a high variance and low bias model is somewhat accurate, but inconsistent on averages. And last but not least, that is the low variance and low bias, it is the ideal scenario. The model is consistent and accurate on average as well. So this is where we are targeting our model to be. So although detecting bias and variance in a model is quite evident, a model with high variance will have a low training error and a high validation error, which means that it will not give you as much error when you are testing in on a training set. Other than on a validation set, it will give you a very high error. And in the case of a high bias, the model will have high training error and the validation error is same as the training error. 
while detecting seems easy the real task is to reduce it to the minimum and in that case we can do the following which is add more input features we can add more complexity by introducing the polynomial features and we can decrease the regularization term and we can get more training data to reduce bias and variance and I'll also show you on a linear regression model how we can actually reduce the error by adding more training data. So now that we know what bias and variance and how it actually affects our model, let's take a look at bias variance trade off. So finding the right balance between the bias and variance of the model is called the bias variance trade off. So it is basically a way to make sure that the model is neither overfitted or underfitted in any case. And if the model is too simple and has a very few parameters, it will suffer from high bias and low variance. And on the other hand, if the model has a large number of parameters, it will have a high variance and low bias. So this trade off should result in a perfectly balanced relationship between the two. And ideally, low bias and low variance is the target for any machine learning model that you have. So in the image over here, if you have a high bias in any model, it's going to underfit the model. And if you have a high variance, it's going to overfit the model because it will also train with the noisy data. So this is all about bias variance trade off guys. Now let's talk about total error. So in any machine learning model, a good balance between bias and variance serves as a perfect scenario in terms of predictive accuracy and avoiding overfitting underfitting altogether. An optimal balance between the bias and the variance in terms of algorithm complexity will ensure that the model is never overfitted or underfitted at all. So let's understand how we can reduce the total error with the help of a practical implementation. So I have already created a linear regression classifier. So I'll begin with the starting. You can also find it on the linear regression in machine learning article on Edureka using the diabetes data set in the data set module of scikit-learn library. So let's go to Jupyter notebook guys. So we are in the Jupyter notebook. I have already written down the code for the model over here. So it is easy. We are using the load diabetes model that we have in the data set module. So first of all, you know, I have committed down this line which prints the data set. And then I have uh, imported the NumPy array. And after that, we have used only one column from the data set for training. And as you can see, we have the test accuracy or mean squared error is equal to 2561. So to reduce this, I'm just going to do one thing that is getting more training data. So for that, what I'll do is I'll just remove this. And instead of that, I'm just going to use everything that I have over here. So I'll just run all cell. So let's see what happens now. I'm gonna run all the cells. Starting from here, this, this. And as you can see, we have reduced the mean squared error from 2500 to 2000. So this is a very simple example or a simple implementation of reducing the total error by feeding more training data to the model. Similarly, we can apply other techniques to reduce the error and maintain a balance between bias and variance for an effective machine learning model. So this brings us to the end of the session, guys. Don't forget to check out other tutorials on IDRECA to learn machine learning algorithms such as support vector machine, decision tree, k nearest neighbor, etc. And don't forget to subscribe to IDRECA for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates from IDRECA. And also do check out the IDRECA's machine learning certification program. The link is given in the description box below. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!